With extensive trial and litigation experience, the professionals at Russo Law Offices are qualified to represent you in civil matters, criminal law, municipal violations, and civil rights issues. When looking for a personal injury lawyer, Warren County, New Jersey residents choose us. We fight tirelessly for our clients with an aggressive and zealous approach. For an exceptional attorney with a hands-on approach, visit RussoLawLLC.com or call to schedule a consultation today. Pain with every move is a red flag. It says you should be thinking hard about an orthopedic evaluation. Think Rothman first. Rothman Institute is first in orthopedic research, clinical trials, innovation, and first with more board-certified surgeons and specialties from head to toe. The word institute in our name has meaning. When pain persists, Rothman first. For an appointment, call 1-800-321-9999 or visit rothmaninstitute.com. Did you know that Urco Credit Union has a new branch office in Easton? Urco recently merged with LV East Credit Union, and members now have a great Easton location at 2240 Northampton Street. Not a member yet? No problem. Stop by either the Easton or Peaberg location and join for free. You won't believe the benefits, like free checking, free online banking and bill pay, free Visa debit card, discount movie tickets, and much more. Visit ircocu.com for details. Urco Credit Union, community banking that's all about you. Federally insured by NCUA. Ahart, Frenzy & Smith is a trusted choice agency, which means we can offer a choice of insurance companies and customize a plan to meet your specialized needs. Most importantly, our trusted choice agency is not an employee of an insurance company. Instead, we have agents who work for you, not the company. So when you need insurance, Call Ahart, Frenzy & Smith, your trusted insurance agency. The housing index, the affordability index is as low as it's been in 40 years. Uh, there's some great federal programs out there. If you could afford a home, there's money and financing available for you, and it's just a wonderful time to, to buy a home. We do commercial and residential. We do some rentals as well, and uh, but we focus primarily on residential, and we keep our commercial to the local level. The best way to get us is our phone number, 908-213-2828. We have full-time secretarial staff taking the calls every day. Uh, you can also get us at Remax.com. They should call us for not only to list and sell their property, but even for future planning. If it's something they're looking to do a year or two or three down the road, it's never too early to start making a plan and speaking uh, with an associate. We also have in-house mortgage uh, representation on the site, so if there's mortgage questions, we are, you know, we're able to provide that as well. Very happy to be in Phillipsburg, and we're really looking forward to be supporters of the community and helping out any way we can. Hello and welcome to Stateliner Sports. My name is Mike Moore, and it's my pleasure to be announcing this season's home wrestling matches through our live stream on StatelinerSports.com. Good evening, everyone, from the pit, the Stateliner Gym in Phillipsburg. It is time for Phillipsburg High School Wrestling. Tonight, the Stateliners host the Cougars of Kittatinny Regional High School. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mike Moore, and along with Jim Meglick, we'll be bringing you all the hold by hold of tonight's match. The Stateliners come into the contest with a record of 3-1 and one in the dual meet season. And Kittatinny comes in at four and one. 
Our webcast tonight is a service of the Rothman Institute, a worldwide leader in orthopedics and official orthopedic partner of the NJSIAA. Visit RothmanInstitute.com. By Russo Law Offices, proud to support State Liner Athletics. Visit them at RussoLawLLC.com. By Erco Community Federal Credit Union, with offices at 450 Hillcrest Boulevard in Phillipsburg and a new Eastern branch at 2240 Northampton Street. Community banking that's all about you. Equal opportunity lender and member, NCUA. By Ahart, Frenzy, and Smith. And by Remax Supreme of Phillipsburg. Public address announcer Ed Mancinelli is announcing the starting lineups uh, to the crowd tonight here at the pit, and we'll get right to that. The match will open at 170 pounds, where it'll be Max Elling for Phillipsburg, a senior 12 and 2 against sophomore Josh Klimek of Kittatinny. He's 8 and 4. At 182 for Phillipsburg, either Tim Hinkle, a senior 5 and 6, or Jan Andel, a senior 1 and 0, oh, against Luke DeGroat, a junior 3 and 7. 195 for the state liners, either Muhammad Fuad, a senior six and five, or sophomore Drew Horan, nine and four, against either Nick Simpson, a junior, two and seven, or senior Tyler Werenberg. For Kittatinny, he's eight and three. That would be the same matchup, the same possibilities at 220. 285 for Phillipsburg, Robert Melise, a sophomore 12 and three, against junior Griffin Waldron, eight and five. 106, Kyle Marcus of the State Liners, a junior 8 and 6 against Mark DiGeronimo, a sophomore 9 and 2. 113, Tom Kosar of the State Liners, a junior 0 and 1 against freshman Perry Mayo, he's 4 and 6. 120, Tyler Agins of Phillipsburg, a junior 3 and 7 against junior Nick Klinger, 9 and 2. 126, Brian Meyer of Phillipsburg, a freshman three and seven against junior Taylor Malfetto. He is six and four. 132, Don Akins of the State Liners, a senior five and seven against junior Austin Scrimani, 12 and one. 138, DJ Wissing for Phillipsburg, a junior 11 and four against sophomore Dylan Minter, two and two. 145, Steve Friedman of Phillipsburg, a senior eight and four against Jake Van Wingarden, a junior seven and four. 152, John Kaluzny of Phillipsburg, a senior five and five against Trevor Scutt, a senior five and six for Kittatinny. And at 160, state liner Jim Shudema, who will go for career win number 100. He is a senior 12 and two on the season against sophomore Cody Mitchell, who is two and five. Kittatinny won the toss. They will be home in the even bounce tonight. And we'll get set to start here at 170 with Max Elling of the State Liners, a senior 12 and two against sophomore Josh Klimek, who is eight and four. State Liners in their garnet singlets tonight with gray trim and Kittatinny in those uh, full length leggings, blue and gray for the Cougars as we start here at 170 pounds. Elling dives in on a leg and Klimek sprawls. Elling diving in again on the leg and Klimek sprawls. Now Max tries to horse him down, spin around behind. That's blocked off by Klimek. Now Klimek dives in on the right leg of Elling. Elling sprawls. And Elling with an inside trip and a headlock and Elling's got the takedown and he's got Klimek on his back. Gary Kessel a referee looking in tonight as Klimek tries to bridge and keep the right shoulder off the mat and now Max is going to get chest to chest with a double arm tie up. Body press by Elling. Still over a minute to go and, he, and the fall. 55 seconds for Max Elling and the State Liners quickly jump out in front by the score of six to nothing. That was expected for Phillipsburg to come out and start off strong at 170 with one of their studs right there. And now at 182, Kittatini will send out Luke DeGroat, a junior three and seven. Phillipsburg sends out senior Tim Hinkle, five and six. They tie up right in the center and the referee Gary Zuch for this bout and Gary Kessel will assist. Some of the fans still filing in 
to the pit tonight. Just underway, Phillipsburg on top, six to nothing on the fall by Max Elling in 55 seconds over Josh Klimek. DeGroat tries to snap down on the head. Hinkle with a headlock. And Hinkle has a takedown. And quickly scrambling off his back was DeGroat. So Hinkle's out in front, 2 nothing. Hinkle trying to take the left elbow back to the knee. Now tries a power half. Chops at that left elbow with a right hand tight waist to break him down. Hinkle shoots a half Nelson from the left side. DeGroat tries to roll. Hinkle stays with him, picks him up, and now breaks him down. Wants to work the power half again. Keeps his weight on the back of DeGroat. And Hinkle's going to give up the escape. It is two to one. Working takedowns again. Here at 182 pounds. DeGroat tried to power shrug Hinkle. That doesn't work. Work on each other's wrists. State liners coming in tonight, ranked number two in the area, according to LehighValleyLive.com. That's behind Bethlehem Catholic. And ahead of Easton, Nazareth, and Freedom in the top five. And then six through ten, Parkland, North Hunterdon, Saucon Valley, Liberty, and Delaware Valley. Hinkle trying to horse him down to his knees as the first period ends with Hinkle out in front, two to one. Luke DeGroat last year had the task of going against Phillipsburg's Jake Kosas. Kosas, winner by fall. It'll be DeGroat underneath to start the second. Right hand tight waist by Hinkle, left elbow. Try it breaks down to Groat on the whistle, trying to run a half Nelson from the left side. To Groat rolls and he is out. On the escape, it's 2 2. Working takedowns here in the second. Hinkle got a takedown in the first, unable to turn to Groat, who has gotten out twice. Tim Hinkle weighs 174. Six. DeGroat weighs 181.6. Stalking each other outside the center. Just under a minute 15 to go in the second with Hinkle and DeGroat tied at two. Kind of DeGroat taps at the head of Hinkle. Now they tie up. In on the left leg is DeGroat. Behind the left knee of Hinkle. Hinkle trying to cross face. As DeGroat picks up that left leg. Hinkle now trying to reach back for a whizzer with the left arm. DeGroat still has Hinkle's left leg up in the air. Hinkle trying to hang on now with a hand behind the left thigh. And Hinkle's able to force his leg free and avoid the takedown with under 30 seconds to go here in the second, the bout still tied at two. DeGroat reached for an ankle pick, couldn't get it, now taps at the head of Hinkle. Final 15 seconds here of the second. Hinkle in on the right leg behind the knee and able to Pick him up and take him off the mat as DeGroat at 1.6 seconds to wrestle. So we're tied at two, getting ready to go to the third period. It'll be Hinkle's choice to start the third. I'm sure he'll go down. Hinkle was 28 and 28 in his career. Coming off a eight and seven season, part-time work last year, got bumped up a lot. He was 15 and 15 as a sophomore. DeGroat is five and eight in his career and three wins on the season. DeGroat with a two on one on the Hinkle's wrist. Now Hinkle trying to come out the side door. 
cross faces, and Hinkle has a reversal. Now he's trying to drive it. It drives him over to his back. And a pin! A fall for Hinkle. Just drove him right over to his back after the reversal and got the fall in 4.26. So we are through two, and it is now Phillipsburg 12 and Kittatinny nothing. Nice job right there by Tim Hinkle. Rolled him over with the wrist. Put him right to his back as he reached over with a half, power half, drove him to his back, got the body press and the fall, 426. So the state liners are out to back-to-back -back falls to start this match as we go to 195. It's Muhammad Fuad coming out for Phillipsburg, and it's either Nick Simpson or Tyler Werenberg for Kittatinny. Werenberg goes out. He is a senior, eight and three. Fouad is a senior, six and five. Kittatinny coach uh, John Gill telling us before the match that Nick Simpson usually gets uh, the opponent considered the best of an opponent's 195 or, or 220, and that would be uh, Drew Horan, who's up next for Phillipsburg. So not surprised that Werenberg goes out here at 195. 30 seconds in and no advantage. State Liners with a 12-0 lead in the match. Fouad got in on a leg, now trying to work a bear hug. Now drops down to the left leg, picks up that leg, and he has a takedown. Fouad on top, 2-0. Muhammad weighs 185-1, Werenberg 189-4, and there's a tilt by Fouad. Gary Kessel counting out and giving a pair of back points to Fouad, who's out in front 4-0. Now he wants a low leg cradle. Werenberg stands, and they're off the mat across the way. 54 seconds to go in the first. Werenberg comes back to the center, hands and knees. Now Fawad, right hand tight waist, breaks him down on the whistle. Werenberg gets to his knees, trying to control the left hand of Fawad so he can't lock anything up. Now Muhammad trying to bar the left arm. Chops at that left elbow. Bars the arm. Gonna try reach for the right wrist. Trying to turn Werenberg with the bar, and Werenberg's able to free that left arm. Now again, he wants a low leg cradle, gives up on that. Now he's way out in front, has a front head and arm with 15 seconds to go in the first. Muhammad trying to maintain control here in the final 10 with a front head and arm. Werenberg trying to pop out of that. And Fawad will hang on and ride out the first period ahead 4 nothing. Last, last 25 seconds there, Fawad was in, not in good shape to... Uh, score any points but defensively he just held on held on to the four nothing lead as we go to the second period Fawad will start down first rankings coming out uh, today from the Express Times and Muhammad honorable mention at 195 he's underneath to start the second off the mat they go across the way Max Zelling who opened with a fall top ranked at 170 by the Express Times and he's ranked third in the state at 170 by NJ.com. Left hand tight waist by Werenberg, chops. Fouad broken down, reaches, Werenberg reaches inside for the right wrist. Keeps his weight high on the back of Fouad. Muhammad gets to his knees. Tries to stand, standing cradle by Fawad, uh, by uh, Werenberg, and Fawad slipped out of that and has himself an escape, and he leads five to nothing. Hama was momentarily in some trouble. Now he spins around behind and gets a takedown and leads seven to nothing. Werenberg had that standing cradle when he tried to take Fawad to the mat. Muhammad slipped his head out of there. Now he's working a tilt. Three count from Gary Kessel, four. Five. That's three back points coming for Muhammad. Rolls him to his stomach. 
gets the three back points, and he leads 10 nothing. Right hand tight waist. Trying to control the left wrist. Now he's pulling the left wrist all the way across the body, trying to work that hazard tilt again. Going to try and tilt him to his left. Werenberg sits out, turns in. Werenberg has an escape. It's 10-1. Final 20 seconds here at the second. Fouad wasn't in great position right there. The best thing he could have done was give up the escape. Werenberg looked for a headlock or some kind of throw. Fouad just gave him the escape. Leads 10-1 after two. And it will be Tyler Werenberg's choice in the third. Tyler is 8-5 and five in his career. Kittatinny graduated 10 of their top wrestlers from a year ago. And they have just two seniors in the lineup. Werenberg underneath here in the third. Werenberg stands, and he comes out. 10-2 now in favor of Phillipsburg's Muhammad Fuad. And they will work takedowns again. It's kind of stalking each other. Werenberg taps at the head of Fuad. Now they work on each other's wrists. Break apart, minute 20 to go in the bout. Again, just trying to get hand control. Now they tie up. One minute to wrestle. Fawad diving in on a double, but will run out of space. Mentioned Max Elling earlier. He was out there for 55 seconds and got the fall. That was Elling's 98th win against 35 losses for the State Liners. As we talk about that, because Jimmy Shudema is going for his 100th win tonight, and he'll be the 14th bout of 14. And Max will definitely be expected to get uh, career win number 100 over the weekend in the 100 and Sussex Warren tournament. Fawad right now with a 10-2 major going. Werenberg is in on a double, and he's got the takedown. So that will take away the major. It is 10-4 in favor of Fuad. Mohammed gets to his knees. Werenberg trying to reach for a cradle. Fuad is out on the escape. It is 11-4. 11 and a half seconds to go. Dave Post saying get that takedown and get the major. It'll be an 11-4 regular decision for Mohamed Fawad of Phillipsburg at 195. We are through three. And the State Liners lead it 15 to nothing. Our wrestling brought to you tonight by Ahart, Frenzy, and Smith, a trusted choice agency, which means we can offer a customized plan to meet your special needs. Most importantly, our trusted choice agency is not an employee of an insurance company. Instead, we have agents who work for you, not the company. That's Ahart, Frenzy, and Smith. 220 pounds, Drew Horan for Phillipsburg. A sophomore nine and four against junior Nick Simpson, two and seven. And the referee for this bout is Gary Zuch. Off the mat, no advantage. Well, the one thing Werenberg did in the last match against Phillipsburg's Muhammad Fawad was he didn't quit. And he got the, got the escape and then he got a takedown in the third period, and that's what Coach Gill told us ahead of time. He didn't want his kids to quit. He wanted to come out there and wrestle six minutes, not back up, no stalling, and um, so Coach Gill didn't expect to get that match or that bout, 
so he's got to be pleased with his wrestler going out there and giving him six strong minutes and in, in a, just a decision loss. Coach Gill is in his 35th year as the head coach at Kittatinny. Dave Post, conversely, in his fifth. Horan near a takedown and fought off by Simpson. Now Horan's looking for a bear hug. Has his hands locked behind the back. And Horan has the takedown and has him on his back. Body press for Horan. Got to get more weight on the left shoulder as Gary Zuch looks in. Plenty of time remaining here in the first. Horan trying to get more weight on that left shoulder. And the fall. A minute 25 with the bear hug by sophomore Drew Horan. And we are through four. It is Phillipsburg with three falls and a decision 21. And Kittatinny, nothing. Remax Supreme of Phillipsburg, New Jersey, owned by Mark Scuderi, has been serving the Phillipsburg area since 2001. Proudly located at 533 Memorial Parkway, Phillipsburg. Our agents live here, work here, and always look to give back to our community. You can reach us at 908-213-2828 or at www.heberrealestate.com. At 285 pounds, Robert Melise with a cradle. Gary Kessel looking in in the fall. That comes in 30 seconds. Thirty seconds for Robert Melise at 285, and we are through five. And Phillipsburg leads 27 to nothing. That was big by Melise right there with that cradle. Nice single leg takedown. Worked the cradle with with ease. And um, Coach Gill told us ahead of time that his heavyweight um, is doing very well this year, but he wasn't sure how he would handle the atmosphere here at the pit. He thought he might be a little intimidated. 106 pounds, Kyle Marcus for Phillipsburg, a junior 8 and 6 against sophomore Mark DiGeronimo. 9 and 2, and Marcus able to spin behind and get a takedown and lead 2 to nothing. This is one of the bouts tonight that Coach Gill hoped to get for Kittatinny. DiGeronimo wrestled at Pope John last year. At Kittatinny this year, Marcus has the legs in and is trying to work a power half. Keeps pressure on the head and neck of Mark DiGeronimo. Trying to drive the power half and it stopped potentially dangerous by referee Gary Zuch. If Coach uh, Gill could have had his way, he would have had this match start at 285 where he thought that his heavyweight Griffin Waldron would have uh, been able to handle this atmosphere, come out and get him a strong win there, and then he would have gone to 106, 113, where he mentions about his wrestler, Perry Mayo, is hard to score on, and then he has his studs coming at 120 and 132, and then 145 is another one that Coach Gill says could be a, an up-and-coming wrestler that he'd hope to get a possible uh, victory against the state liners here tonight. Marcus still in control, hanging on to the left leg of DiGeronimo. And stalling is called. A warning for stalling on Marcus as he was hanging on to that left leg. So back to the center. Marcus, left hand, tight waist, right elbow. DiGeronimo stands. And Marcus will cut him. On the escape, it is two to one. Barrel roll by Marcus to a takedown. And the state liner junior leads four to one. Coach uh, Dave Post telling us beforehand that Tom Kozar, who was in the lineup tonight at, at 113 because Brandon Patesel, the two-time the uh, state runner up a year ago, who is out with a broken hand. Kozar moving up from 106 to wrestle 113 varsity and Coach Post telling us that they are very close, Marcus and Kozar, 
in the room. Four to one, Marcus after one, and he's underneath to start the second. That's a very tall Mark DiGeronimo. Trying to get control of the Marcus with both hands wrapped around DiGeronimo's right wrist as he comes up to his knees. DiGeronimo breaks him back down, tries to bar the right arm. Cuffs Marcus under the chin, trying to take him over. And he's got Marcus on his back. Gary Zuch is counting out back points. Marcus trying to keep that shoulder off the mat. And he's able now to belly down. And that's three back points for DiGeronimo. And we have tied the bout at four. Now DiGeronimo with front head and arm. Marcus trying to pop his head and spin around at DiGeronimo's right. His head is out. DiGeronimo has both hands wrapped around the right wrist of Marcus. And there's Marcus with the reversal. Back out in front, 6-4. De Geronimo tried to roll. Marcus has the right leg in. Trying to set up a power half again. Pressure from his left arm on the head and neck and leaning out the left side and he's got him turned over. Two count, three. Gary Zuch looking in at the right shoulder. Marcus with 20 seconds to wrestle here in the second. Has Di Geronimo in a lot of trouble in the fall. Three minutes and 45 with a power half for Phillipsburg's Kyle Marcus. We are through six, and Phillipsburg leads Kittatinny 33 to nothing on five falls and a decision. At 113 pounds, Tom Kozar for Phillipsburg, a junior 0-1 against Perry Mayo, a freshman 4-6. What a turnaround that last bout there. DiGeronimo had Marcus in trouble, um, got three back points. Next thing you know, Marcus reverses him. As Mike was mentioning, he had to risk two hands. Marcus ended up um, tying up the ankle to get the reversal. And then he worked on the power half and over with the fall in 346. Yeah, power half is usually good for back points, but you don't see a lot of falls with it. He's throwing in a leg is Kozar. Now drops down looking for a, a single behind the right knee. Trying to pull that leg through now. Still no advantage. Mayo has the left leg of Kozar. Kozar, the right leg of Mayo. They are side by side in front of the Kittatiti bench. Now Kozar trying to come out and lock up a cradle. Still no advantage, says Gary Kessel. At the edge of the mat, and as Kozar went to spin around behind, they went off the mat. Coach Post wanted to take down earlier, though, when, when um, Kozar shrugged him by, hooked his ankle, but Gary Kessel looked in, did not call anything, said no control for... Phillipsburg junior Tom Kozar. Power shrug and a takedown by Kozar to lead two to nothing. He tries to throw the right leg in. Trying to work near leg, far arm, navy ride. Now picks that right arm up over his head and trying to turn Mayo with that. Final 10 seconds of the first. Again, has that arm pulled up over his head. He'll try to turn Mayo to his right. First period ends 2-0 for junior Tom Kozar over freshman Perry Mayo. Mentioned Coach Post in his fifth season with a record of 63 and 14, two-time Express Times Coach of the Year, and last year was the Regional Coach of the Year. 
And uh, speaking of the regions, uh, our thanks tonight to Mike Weileman, longtime sports writer who uh, supplied me with a bunch of Kid Atini statistics for tonight. Mike writes the Open Mike blog, which you can read at mikeopen.blogspot.com. Mikeopen.blogspot.com. Mike Weileman, always a great guy, always with the information you need. If he don't have it, he will get it for you. Just an all-around good guy and now doing most of his work down in the Sussex area. And he's going to have his uh, first region rankings of the season out soon. So check that out on his blog. Kozar riding here in the second, over a minute so far, unable to turn Harry Mayo of Kittatinny. Mayo stands. Kozar has that left leg, keeps that left leg in, brings him back down. Again, then reaches for the far arm. Trying to get Mayo off his base. He has kept him all tied up, but has not come close to turning him. Now he's reaching for a cross-face cradle. Gives up on that. Keeps that leg in, left leg in, chops at the right elbow. Trying to take that elbow back to the knee and lock up a cradle. Final 10 seconds of the second. So Tom Kozar will ride out the period. And he leads 2-0 after two. Kozar will be underneath to start the third. Mayo weighs 113.4, Kozar 111.5. Kozar riding out, or rather Mayo riding out the right side of Kozar. Kozar looking for his first varsity win here tonight. Sits, turns in, he's got the escape. Kozar leads 3-0. Stateliners lead the match 33-0. We're at 113 pounds or the seventh of 14. Off the mat right in front of our Statelinersports.com microphones. Minute 20 to go in the bout the work takedowns. Front head and arm by Kozar. Trying to snap down Mayo. He's up on his toes. Mayo on his knees as Gary Kessel looks in. There's a stalemate call from Gary with a minute three to go in the bout. Tie up outside the center. There's that power shrug attempted by Kozar. Can't finish it that time. That's how he got the takedown in the first. Now he's in on the left leg, trying to switch to a double. And he's got the takedown. Kozar on top, 5-0. Throws the left leg in. Works on that right elbow, trying to take it back to the right knee and reach behind the knee and lock up a cradle. That was a nice work. Workman-like takedown there by Kozar, going from the single to the double, his second takedown of the match, 5-0 lead, he's 20 seconds away from his first varsity win. Managed to ride out Mayo in the second, and after getting an escape and takedown, he's gonna ride him out here in the third, five seconds to go. It is a 5-0 decision for Tom Kozar. We are halfway through. It is Phillipsburg 36 and Kittatinny nothing. Our wrestling tonight is service of the Rothman Institute, a worldwide leader in orthopedics, an official orthopedic sponsor of the NJSIAA. Visit RothmanInstitute.com. And by Russo Law Offices, proud to support Stateliner Athletics. Visit RussoLawLLC.com. 120, Tyler Agins 
for Phillipsburg, a junior three and seven against junior Nick Klinger, who is nine and two for Kittatinny. He is in on the double on Agins, and Agins is able to force him off the mat, no advantage. State liners out quick here with a 10 to one takedown advantage on Kittatinny. Like the other night against West Morris Central, Phillipsburg very dominant on their feet. Referee Gary Zuch has a word to say with both wrestlers. And now back to action, a minute 35 to go in the first. Klinger tapping at the head of Akins. They break apart. Now he dives in on the right leg of Akins behind the right knee. Trying to pick up Akins and take him over top. Drops down Akins on his left hip. Still no advantage. Higgins locked around the midsection. Stalemate called by Gary Zuch in a minute two to go in the first. Higgins taps at the head of Klinger. Klinger tried to reach for the left leg, left ankle couldn't pull it in. Reaches again. Tries to snap down Higgins. Higgins dives in on the left leg of Klinger. Klinger draped over top. And there's an ankle pick as by Klinger as Higgins tried to back out of that. Still no advantage here. And now trying to lock up a cradle as Higgins. Still no advantage. 20 seconds to go in the first. Higgins trying to get a leg in. And now Klinger picks up the, on the double of Higgins. Agins reaches for the right leg of Klinger, and Klinger comes out of that scramble with the takedown with five seconds to go to lead it two to nothing. That was a nice flurry on the mat right there with Klinger coming out on top with the takedown and a two nothing lead after one. Nick Klinger was second last year in District 3. He was second in the Caldwell tournament and second in Kittatinny's holiday tournament. He has an escape in the second and leads three to nothing. This was one of the bouts that Coach Gill hoped to get tonight. Kittatinny finished fifth in that Caldwell tournament and fourth in their own tournament. And they have dual meet victories over West Milford. There's a takedown for Klinger. And he is up five to nothing. Over West Milford, 51-29. Wayne Valley, 49-16. Jefferson, 51-21. And last night, North Warren, 61-12. Their only loss to Governor Livingston, 36-29. Coach Gill with over 500 career wins at Kittatinny. And his last losing season, Jim, 1988-89. So he has been a very dependable winner at Kittatinny. And always a force when we see him up at Walk Hill Valley in the regionals. Always has uh, wrestlers up there placing. And uh, just hard to imagine he's in his 35th year. Nick Klinger leading Phillipsburg's Tyler Eakins here at 120. Now he cuts him. It is 5 to 1. And the work takedowns again here in the second. Klinger with a late takedown in the first. And an escape and takedown here in the second. And he's near another takedown. Has the right leg trying to switch to a double. There's the takedown. And he leads 7 1. Nice duck under for a takedown there. Under 20 seconds to wrestle here in the second. Tries to bar the right arm of Tyler Reagans. Now controls the right wrist. And Klinger will ride out the second. He's ahead 7-1 after two. Agins chooses underneath in the third.
Tyler, 13 career wins. He was 9 and 14 a year ago. Klinger riding in the third, right hand tight waist. Higgins trying to peel that tight waist. Controls that right wrist. Klinger hanging on to the left leg. At now two hands around the ankle. As Higgins tries to stand and Klinger brings him back down. Klinger reaches for the left wrist. Tries to hammer lock that. Riding out the left side of Tyler Reagans. Now the score might be 36-0, but Coach Gill over there was still giving an earful to assistant referee for this bout, Gary Kessel, just because of a caution to uh, his wrestler, Nick Klinger. So the fire's still there for Coach Gill. You can see it. Off the mat here in a minute three. Right hand tight waist, left elbow. Klinger reaches back through the crotch. Trying to take Aikens off his base. Tyler trying to peel off that tight waist, controlling, trying to control the right wrist of Nick Klinger. Aikens trying to stand up on his right foot. Now he stands. Klinger drops down to a double and maintains control. A little surprised Klinger didn't cut him right away to start this, this period work for the major. He had three takedowns already in the bout. Now he's just going to ride out as of this moment with 18 seconds to go and still the 7-1 lead like he started the third. Higgins gets set. Klinger, right hand tight waist, left elbow. Ken Aikens tries to peel that tight waist. And he's out with 10 seconds to go. It's 7-2 on the escape. Kittatinny will get on the board. Nick, Kl Nick Klinger, a 7-2 decision at 120 over Tyler Aikens of Phillipsburg. We are through eight. It is Phillipsburg 36 and Kittatinny 3. Our wrestling tonight is service of Erco Community Federal Credit Union with offices at 450 Hillcrest Boulevard in Phillipsburg and their new Easton branch at 2240 Northampton Street in Easton. Community banking that's all about you. 126 pounds, Brian Meyer for Phillipsburg, a freshman three and seven against junior Taylor Molfetto. He is six and four. Tied up outside the center. Gary Kessel will be the referee for this bout. Assisted by Gary Zuch, they go off the mat across the way. Gary does not do a lot of high school anymore mainly uh, collegiate wrestling and he has been a referee at the uh, NCAA tournament for a number of years in on the left leg is Meyer and Meyer has a takedown and leads 2-0 state liner freshman reaches inside for the left wrist while Fetto tries to stand Meyer brings him back down near the edge of the mat and they're off at a minute two to go in the first. Meyer with the opening takedown. He was dominant on his feet the other night during our broadcast on StatelinerSports.com against West Morris Central. Meyer riding out the left side. Stateliner's coming off a dual meet win over North Hunterdon on Monday night. 39 21, and they'll be in action again this weekend in the Hunterdon Sussex Warren Tournament at Hunterdon Central. Off the mat to our right, 40 seconds to go here in the first. 2 0 lead for Phillipsburg's Brian Meyer over Kittatinny's Taylor Malfetto. 
Zeno tries to sit. Meyer brings him back down. The series with Kittatinny began in the 2000-2001 season. Phillipsburg leads it 13 to 6. As Malfetto stands, Meyer brings him back down to his knees. Malfetto stands again. Meyer drops down and goes to a two-leg tackle, maintaining control here with 10 seconds to go in the first period. And Brian Meyer will ride out Malfetto. It's 2 nothing after one. Phillipsburg has won the last four in the series. And the last Kittatinny win was 41-34 in 2009 2010. Malfetto chose neutral to start the second period. Meyer deferred. Malfetto finished fourth in District 3 last year, and he is a runner up in the Kittatinny Holiday Tournament. Looking for a barrel roll. Meyer now settles for a single. Trips. Looking to get the takedown, a wizard put in by Malfetto. So far, no advantage. Meyer has to try and slip that wizard. Picks up on the left leg of Malfetto. Trying to get his right arm out of there. Now he trips and gets the takedown, and Meyer leads 4 0. Brian has looked pretty effective on his feet in this bout. Yeah, Meyer looked over at Coach Post when he had um, the single leg and Molfetto had the wizard thrown in. Coach Post told him to lift up the leg. He lifted the leg up, reached for the far ankle, brought him over for his second takedown, a 4-0 lead with 53 seconds to go in the second. Come back to the center. Molfetto gets set hands and knees. Meyer, right hand tight waist. Malfetto stands. Meyer picks him up, sits behind him, maintains control. Right hand tight waist. Trying to bar the left arm. Keeps his weight high in the back of Malfetto, who's on his knees. Loses the bar. Now trying to bar the left arm again. Near the edge of the mat across the way. Meyer trying to pull him back on and tilt them. Unable to break the plane. Gary Kessel looking on with 15 seconds to go in the period and they go off the mat. 4-0 lead here for Brian Meyer of Phillipsburg, the freshman on the strength of two takedowns. State liners take down advantage 12-4. State liners lead in the match 36 to 3 with five falls and two decisions. And Brian Meyer on the bat on the mat right now in the ninth of 14. Maintaining control here in the second period. So on the strength of two takedowns, Meyer leads 4-0 after two. It'll be Brian's choice. And he will take underneath in the third. NewJersey.com out with the uh, team and individual rankings today. Phillipsburg is ranked number eight in New Jersey. That's behind Bergen Catholic, Boundbrook, which moved up to number two this week. St. Peter's Prep in the third spot. There's an escape for Meyer. And he leads five nothing here in the third. Don Bosco Prep is four. Brick Memorial, five. Paulsboro, six. Howell, seven. Then the State Liners. Hanover Park is ninth. DePaul is tenth. There's a nice ankle pick by Meyer. Trying to spin around the left and lock up a cradle. There's the takedown for Meyer. He leads seven nothing. And trying to lock up a cradle here out the left side of Taylor Malfetto gives up on that. Southern is ranked 12th. There's an escape. It is 7-1. Jackson is 17th. And North Hunterdon 
is 19th. Phillipsburg is ranked number one in all of group four. Working takedowns here as Meyer tries to work towards a major. They're off the mat at 42 seconds. You mentioned Boundbrook ranked number two. They'll be at the pit here, and we'll have that coverage on StatelinerSports.com. They'll be here on the 21st of January. Tie up each other's wrists. Reaching for a leg as Meyer can't pull it in. Stalling warning on Malfetto for backing up. And they're off the mat right in front of us here with 19 seconds to wrestle. So Meyer with three takedowns and, es and an escape. Would like to get that fourth takedown and get a major. He has been the aggressor throughout the bout. 10 seconds to go. Reaching for a barrel roll, can't get it. Reaches for the right ankle, can't pull it in. They're stalling and he will get one point to make it 8-1. That's the first stalling point given up by either team tonight. And that'll be the final. Freshman Brian Meyer of Phillipsburg with his fourth win of the year. An 8-1 decision at 126 pounds. We are through nine. It's Phillipsburg 39 and Kivatini 3. State liners clinching the match on that win by Meyer. So at 132, it'll be Don Egans for Phillipsburg. He is a senior, 5 and 7, against Austin Scrivani of Kittatinny. He is a junior, he is 12 and 1. Scrivani, one of the studs for Kittatinny. Kittatinny graduating 12 wrestlers last year, 12 varsity wrestlers. And back this year with a 4-1 and one start anyway, up until tonight, the record now drops to 4-2. and two. Well, takedown for Agins, and then it stopped. And a technical violation against Agins gives up a penalty point. And it is two to one. And then Egan's indicates the optional start. So on the escape, it is two two. Scrivani dives in on the right leg behind the knee. Trying to pull that leg through. He's behind Egan's. And he's got a takedown. Scrivani leads four to two. Kicks, throws in the left leg and tries to take Higgins over to his back, but they're off the mat right in front of us. A minute 11 to go in the first. Right hand tight race by Scrivani. Tries to throw in a half Nelson from the left side. Higgins trying to pick that off from behind his neck. Scrivani, now Egan's tries to sit and spin. Scrivani stays right with him and it stopped potentially dangerous as he had the left arm behind, the left arm of Egan's behind his head. 54 seconds to go in the first. Tries to check back Egan's. Egan's is trying to come out the back door. Trying to pull those legs over top his head out in front. Referee Gary Zuch looks in. Higgins up on his feet trying to pop out of that. And a stalemate's called at 30 seconds. Higgins couldn't shake Stravani over the top there. And he couldn't push off the butt to get out. His arm was trapped underneath. Stalemate called by referee Gary Zuch. Aiken stands trying to pull the hands apart. Stravani brings him back down. Higgins stands again. Scavani brings it back down, almost dropped. Egan's right on top of him, and now Egan's comes out. Egan's trying to work a headlock. Still no advantage here. The escape is 4-3, and he ran out of room, trying to work that headlock and drop him over his hip. So they're back neutral at nine seconds. It's 4-3 in favor of Scramani. Dave Post telling us beforehand that Scavani really likes the scramble situations, likes to roll around on the mat. And he was hoping 
that he could get a matchup of Scrivani and, and DJ Wissing, but Scrivani weighed in at 132 and stayed down. End of the first period, it's 4-3, Scrivani. Akins will cut him to start the second, so it'll be 5-3. Stateliners have the match won. It is 39-3. We're at 132 or the tenth of 14. They tie up outside the center. Scrivani is a defending District 3 champion, and he was third in Region 1 last year. He's looking for a bear hug and a throw. Hagen steps across. Hagen's got the takedown as they go off the mat. Now he had his shoulders exposed, but off the wrestling surface. So the bout is tied at five, and Agins will cut him. 6-5, Scrivani. And after watching a period, and an almost a period and a half here, Jim, you know exactly what Dave Post was talking about with Scrivani before the match. Yeah, just uh Awkward type of wrestler, always likes to do throws and sit out, turn in, reach out. Anything he can to uh, keep his opponent off base. And um, he almost got caught a couple times. You mentioned the one time, Agins came down on him. He almost had him flat on his back. And luckily, Scrivani gave up just an escape at that time. Yeah, Agins has been in good position twice, but off the mat. 50 seconds to go here in the second. 6-5 lead for Scrivani. He is 69-23 and 23 in his career. Akins looked for a throw. Underhooks the right shoulder. Now trying to work a butt drag. Scrivani hanging on to his right arm at the elbow so he can't spin around behind. Now Akins looks to try to set up a throw again. 15 seconds to go, and I think Dave Post is yelling, get out of that, with 10 seconds to go. Trying to snap and spin, with the butt drag, Scavani blocks him off, and the period ends 6-5. Aikens almost tossed him to his back as the period came to an end. Entertaining bout. Scrivani last year lost to Friedman 5-3. The year before that, Scrivani decision Tyler Pachanka 13-9. Aikens so underneath in the third. Right hand tight waist by Scrivani. Reaching inside, looking for a half Nelson from the left side. Higgins trying to sit. Scrivani with that half in the left side as Higgins tries to stand. Now he tries to peel off that half. Reaches back for the right leg of Scrivani, trying to pull him out in front. Scrivani still in control here in the third. Minute 20 to go in the bout. Scrivani on top, 6-5. Stalemate called by referee Gary Zuch. Akins will get set, hands and knees. Scrivani, right hand tight waist, and quickly jumps out the right side. Akins trying to stand. Akins still on his hands and his feet. He wants to try and step across Scrivani. Akins again tries to stand. Stands. Scrivani trying to bring him back down. Scrivani gets him to his knees. 45 seconds to go in the bout. Agins with a hand behind the left knee of Scrivani, trying to pull him out in front of him. Phillipsburg fans want stalling on Scrivani. Now a, a Peterson, and staying right with him, though, is Scrivani. Scrivani has the right leg in, trapping the left leg of Agins at the edge. They go off the mat at 25 seconds to go. And a very entertaining bout, and the crowd applauding. Oh 
Egan tries to stand. Scrivani with his weight high in the back of Egan's. Gets him to his knees. Egan's trying to sit back into him. Reaches back for the head. Scrivani maintains control. Egan's trying to sit with seven seconds to go. Scrivani throws a leg and he's got a tilt. Scrivani's going to get some back points as this one comes to an end. He will get two back points. So Austin Scrivani with an 8 five decision over Phillipsburg's Don Agins at 132. We are through 10. It is Phillipsburg 39 and Kittatinny 6. Yeah, you don't mind seeing a wrestler give up back points at that part of the match with 10 seconds to go. Agins tried to roll through. It didn't work. He got caught. Gave up two. And an 8-5 decision for Kittatinny's Austin Stravani. DJ Wissing for Phillipsburg at 138. He's a junior, 11-4. Against sophomore Dylan Minter, who is 2-2. Two and two. State liners have five falls. Two regular, or correction, three regular decisions for 39. There's a takedown for Wissing. He leads 2 to nothing, And Kittatinny has a pair of regular decisions. Off the mat in front of the Kittatinny bench across the way. Minute 28 to go in the first. Phillipsburg, 17 takedowns. 17 takedowns to 5 on Kittatinny. Wissing, left hand, tight waist. Throws the left leg in. Now picks up on the right ankle, trying to Flatten out Dylan Minter. DJ Wissing, honorable mention in this weight class by the Express Times. And he is a third place finisher in this year's Bethlehem Holiday Classic. Tries to bar the right arm, gives up on that, now reaches inside for the right wrist, gives up on that, reaches inside for the left wrist. Right hand tight waist. Wissing riding out the left side of Dylan Minter. Keeps his weight on the back of Minter. Trying to drive a half in the right side, takes the left wrist and he's got him over on his back. Gary Kessel looking in with 25 seconds to go here. Now he loses them, and they go off. It'll be three back points and one on a neutral for Minter. So the back points make it 5 nothing, and the escape is 5-1, Wissing. And the work takedowns here, final 20 seconds of the first. Minter tries to tap at the head of Wissing. Minter dives in on the right leg of Wissing. TJ trying to reach back for a wizard. Three seconds to go. And Wissing will fight off that takedown attempt, and he leads 5-1 after one. Minter was in deep there on that single to end the first period. Now it's Wissing's choice. He'll go down to start the second with his 5-1 lead. DJ 31 and 16 in his career. He was 19 and 12 a year ago. He stands. Minter trying to pick him up. Now tries to underhook the right shoulder. Throws in a half from the right. Gets Wissing to his knees and they go off just to our right. With Minter still in control. Phillipsburg started off early and often in this bout against Kittatinny. Five falls in the first six matches. Three of the falls in the first period. Right hand tight waist. Wissing. With a Peterson roll. Gives up on that and spins around behind. And gets a take a reversal. Reversal and leads 5-1. Or excuse me, leads 7-1. They have 9-1 up on the scoreboard. I've got 7. They cut him. I didn't see any. There were no back points on that Peterson because he really didn't finish that. 
believe the score is 7-2. It's 9-2 up on the board. There's a takedown for Minter, and it's 9-4. Come back to the center with Wissing underneath. Minute six to wrestle in the second. Wissing is set. Minter right hand tight waist left elbow. Wissing stands, brought back down, now sits, turns in, and he's got the reversal. 9-4. 45 seconds to wrestle in the second. Wissing riding out the left side. Throws the right leg in, trapping the left leg. Keeps pressure on the head and neck of Minter. Now trying to set up a splaydle, and he's got him on his back, and the fall. A splaydle, and a fall in 338 for DJ Wissing. So we go to 145, it is Phillipsburg 45, and Kittatinny 6. Well, I guess it doesn't matter if it was 9-4 or 7-4 at the time then. Steven Friedman comes out for Phillipsburg at 145. He's a senior 8-4 and four against Jake Van Wing Erden. He is a junior 7-4. Friedman tried to work a power shrug, and Van Wingarden fights that off. And he works it again at the edge and can't finish it at a minute 36. They're off the mat. Take a minute here to say hello to my brother listening tonight in Hartford, Connecticut to StatelinerSports.com, your old broadcast partner from years ago. Probably about now getting set to put the cufflinks on his pajamas. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure you'll hear about that. That's an old Dick Hammer line. And it got quite a chuckle at the time. Friedman trying to work a front head and arm. Van Winkerden pops his head out of there, no advantage. One minute to wrestle here, scoreless first. Again, he tries to throw him off the mat and onto the gym floor. At the pit goes Jake Vangwigarden. Hand fighting back in the center. Friedman misses on an ankle pick. Vangwigarden sprawling. And Stephen Friedman may have a little blood again from the nose, and we had that. Same issue last Friday in the match against West Morris Central. And trainer Dwayne Bryda will come out and take a look at him. Nobody left the pit right now. Still a nice, nice crowd here holding on for the 14th bout of the night. That'll be Jimmy Shudema going for his 100th win as a state liner. Steve and Friedman are going to put a plug in the left nostril for Steven. District runner-up a year ago. Ranked fifth in this weight class by the Express Times. And he is 66 and 51 in his career. He's been a four-year starter for Coach Dave Post. No advantage here. We have wrestled minute 20 here at 145 pounds. Tie up just outside the center. Looking for a barrel roll is Van Wingerden. Blocked off by Friedman. Friedman out trying to work a front head and arm. Van Wingerden pops out of that. No advantage, 20 seconds to go here in the first. Friedman misses on a duck under. And then 
tries to hit a throw, but off the mat, no advantage at 13 seconds. Friedman reaches for the left leg, can't pull it in. Now that power shrug, he's got a leg in, has to get a knee to the mat. Does and gets the takedown, with and then it was waved off by referee Gary Zuch. So he called the takedown and waved it off. Now he will discuss with Gary Kessel, and they're in agreement. No takedown, scoreless after one. Van Wingerden's choice in the second. He'll go underneath. Our first scoreless period of the night. Friedman eight and four, Van Wingerden seven and four, and Friedman will give him an escape in the second. So Van Wingerden goes up one nothing. Friedman tries to duck under, then tries to work. Now that power shrug again, and there's the takedown as he got a hand to the mat. Friedman on top, two to one, on the power shrug that he just missed finishing at the end of the first period. Now an escape for Van Wingerden, and it is 2-2. And they go off the mat across the way in a minute 34 to wrestle in the second period. Friedman reaches for the left leg. Can't pull it in. Van Wingarden trying to front head and arm and then a shrug and then a barrel roll by Friedman and they're off the mat in a minute 18 to wrestle in the second. Friedman has to take off and adjust the headgear and may have a little problem with that plug. And the blood clock will roll again for Phillipsburg's Stephen Friedman, the hero of the Thanksgiving Day game against Easton this year with a fourth quarter punt return that erased a 14 to 12 deficit and gave the State Liners a 19-14 win. Friedman two and one in his career against Kittatinny as far as dual matches go. Last year Friedman decisions um, Cervani five to three the year before, he decisioned Klinger 3-2, and the year before that, he lost to Christian Silva 7-3. Doing a little cleanup of the blood on the mat. Now they're set. Minute 18 to go in the second. Friedman and Van Wingarden tied at two. Tries to snap down Van Wingarden. That's blocked off. Friedman reaches for the leg, can't get it. Now wants a front head and arm. Spins around to Van Wingarden's left, blocked off. Friedman trying to reach inside to take him off his base and then spin around to his right. Still trying to spin to his right as Van Wingarden tries to block off with the right arm. Friedman's behind him, picks him up and drops him down for the takedown. And Friedman leads 4-2. Second takedown for Steven Friedman, and he worked very hard to get that one. Just under 30 seconds to go in the second. See if he can keep him down here, because it'll be Friedman's choice to start the third. Has the right leg in. They're at the edge of the mat across the way in front of Coach John Gill and the Kittatinny bench. Final five seconds. And Friedman will ride him out and lead 4-2 after two. Stephen finished seventh in the Bethlehem Holiday Tournament. Fourth in last year's Warren Sussex, Warren, excuse me, Hunterdon and Sussex Warren Tournament. He was 21 and 16 as a freshman. 19 and 15 as a sophomore, 18 and 16 a year ago, and 8 and 4 so far this season. Wrestled at 103 as a freshman. It's a big jump. He's underneath and leading 4-2 as we start the third. And if you look at him, Mike, it's not that he... Uh, don't look like he was in the weight room. He's just very tall, tall and lanky, 145-pounder. 
pretty good defensive back on the state liner football team this year. Van Wingerden reaches for the right wrist. He's got Friedman flattened out. Now he gets to his knees. Now he stands and he's out. In 20 seconds, Friedman has an escape from the state liner senior on top 5 2. Working takedowns outside the center. Friedman horses his way around behind Van Wingerden. He gets the takedown to lead 7 to 2. Phillipsburg's 20th takedown on the night. Picks up on the left ankle. Trying to flatten out Van Wingerden. Has that right arm pulled across the body, controlling it at the elbow. Now he loses it, and they're off the mat at 59 seconds. Two takedowns for Friedman in the bout. Wissing had one. Don Egan's had one. Brian Meyer with three. Tom Kozar had a pair. Kyle Marcus a pair. Friedman picks him up, drops him back down. And Melise, Fouad, or, uh, excuse me, Melise Horan had one each before getting a fall. Fouad had two. Hinkle had one before getting a fall, and Elling had one. Friedman trying to work a tilt. 20 seconds to go in the bout, and leading 7-2. Gets out in front. He will give up an escape. It is 7-3. Three. three escapes for Jake Van Wingerden. They're off the mat in front of the state liner bench. At seven seconds to go. It'll be bout win number 10 for the state liners on the night against just two losses. Seven to three for Steven Friedman. So we are through 12. It is Phillipsburg 48 and Kittatinny 6. State liners with six falls and four regular decisions. John Kaluzny. Kaluzny is senior, five and five. Trevor Scott is a senior, five and six. And a cement job, concrete special by Kaluzny. He's got Scott on his back. Looking in is referee Gary Kessel. Trying to bridge is Scott. And he manages to bridge off his back. That's a five point play for John Kaluzny. So the takedown and the back points make it five to nothing. He hit a concrete special to get a fall on Friday night against West Morris Central. Now he works a hazard tilt, has him on his back. Gary Kessel counting out the back points again. He will take him back to his knees, three back points. Kaluzny leading eight, nothing. Scott stands, Kaluzny brings him back down to his knees. Kaluzny breaks him down, trying to work the hazard tilt again and rolls him over. Two count, three, four, five, three back points for Kaluzny. He'll bring him to his knees on the three back. It's 11 nothing. See if he tries to set up another hazard tilt. Still a lot of time left here in the first period, 30 seconds to go. So he's got the Two on one, then takes him over. One count, two, three, four, five. Did he get the fifth? No, it, the uh, shoulder was off the mat. Two back points there. Now we'll take him over again. So it's 13, and he gets the two back points and gets a technical fall in a minute 50 for John Kaluzny. So we go to the final bout of the night. It is Phillipsburg 53 and Kittatinny 6. So senior Jim Shudema 
at 12 and 2, looking for career win number 100 against sophomore Cody Mitchell. 2 and 5. Shunema goes right in, dives on a double, has a takedown, and leads 2 to nothing. Shudema throws in the right leg and takes him off the mat across the way. State liner students going to count all the way to 53, leading 53 to 6. Shudema throws in the right leg, takes the right wrist. Now take leaning out the right side. As referee Gary Zuch looks in, says he's not broken the plane yet. Trying to work that power half. A power half from the right side. I think the student section is going to count to 100. With a minute 15 to wrestle here in the first. Shoot him up with both legs in. That's... Mitchell was trying to stand and potentially dangerous is called by referee Gary Zuch. I was on board with you, Mike. I thought the student section was counting up on the scoreboard at the 53 to state liners that put up here tonight. Shudema maintains control. Now he's got him tilted out the right side. Three count, four, five, and the four! In a minute six, Career win number 100 for senior Jim Shudema against just 23 losses. The fall in a minute six. And the State Liners wrap up a 59 to 6 win tonight over the Cougars of Kittatinny. So the State Liners drop only a pair of bouts, a, a pair of decisions. Phillipsburg with seven falls, a technical fall, and four regular decisions for the 59 points. And Kittatinny with two regular decisions for six. The victory, Phillipsburg will go to four and one on the season. And that is three and one against New Jersey competition. And Phillipsburg is now 433, 433 wins, 60 losses, and one draw versus New Jersey competition since the 1979-80 season. The match began at 170. Phillipsburg's Max Elling, a fall with a headlock in 55 seconds over Josh Klimek. At 182, Tim Hinkle, a fall in 426 over Luke DeGroat. 195, Mohamed Fouad of Phillipsburg, an 11-4 decision over Tyler Werenberg. At 220, Drew Horan of Phillipsburg, a fall with a bear hug in a minute 25 over Nick Simpson. At 285, Robert Melise of Phillipsburg, a fall with a cradle in 30 seconds over Griffin Waldron. And 106, Kyle Marcus of the State Liners, a fall with a power half in 345 over Mark DiGeronimo. So we were through six bouts and the State Liners had a 33 to nothing lead. They upped it to 36 to nothing at the halfway point. Tom Kozar, with a 5-0 decision over Perry Mayo at 113. 120, Kittatinny got on the board on Nick Klinger's 7-2 decision over Tyler Egans. At 126, Brian Meyer of the State Liners, an 8-1 decision over Taylor Malfetto. That made it 39-3. 132, Austin Scrivani of Kittatinny got the Cougars' second win, an 8-5 decision over Don Egans, that made it 39-6. The uh, Meyer victory, by the way, clinched the match for Phillipsburg at 39-3. 138, DJ Wissing of Phillipsburg, a fall with a splatel in 338 over Dylan Minter. 
That made it 45 to 6. 145, Stephen Friedman of the State Liners, a 7 3 decision over Jake Van Wingerden. That made it 48 to 6. At 152, John Kaluzny with a very workmanlike technical fall in a minute 50, 15 to nothing over Trevor Scott. That made it 53 to 6. And then at 160 pounds, uh, Jim Shudema, the State Liners career win number 100, a fall in a minute six over sophomore Cody Mitchell. Seven falls, a technical fall, and four regular decisions for the State Liners and two regular decisions for Kittatinny. With that victory, the State Liners up their lead in the series, uh, 14 victories for Phillipsburg against six for the Cougars, and Phillipsburg has won five straight in the series. Uh, the last win for Kittatinny back in the 2009-2010 uh, season. Our wrestling on StatelinerSports.com, a service tonight of Rothman Institute, a worldwide leader in orthopedics, an official orthopedic partner of the NJSIAA. Visit RothmanInstitute.com. By Russo Law Offices, proud to support Stateliner Athletics. Visit RussoLawLLC.com. By Urco Community Federal Credit Union, with offices at 450 Hillcrest Boulevard in Phillipsburg. And a new branch, 2240 Northampton Street in Easton. By Ahart, Frenzy, and Smith. And by Remax Supreme of Phillipsburg. And we are joined in Matt's side by Stateliner coach Dave Post. And... Uh, you know, you, you told me you wanted to get them all tonight. Uh, you didn't get them all, but, but you did get a, a dozen and another impressive performance tonight. Yeah, we knew, uh, we knew they had two really, really top caliber guys at, uh, at 120 and 132. Um, and we told those guys, just go out. And, uh, you know, they, they, the Eggins brothers have uh, had a tough time of it. You know, those are two really tough weight classes around the area. And uh, I thought both of them went out and scrapped really well. Um, you know, Tyler started it off, and, you know, it, it could be a totally different match if he gets that takedown and he's able to convert in the first period because it, ta it changes the complexion of the match. Um, and then Donald came out, and, I mean, he did exactly what we asked him to do. Come, you know, put yourself in position to, to be able to win the match. And, uh, you know, he took one of the, one of the top kids around and, and really had him on the ropes there. And, you know, there's some things that we see that we're going to be able to work on. And, uh, you know, that happened last year to Steven. You know, he wrestled Scrivani. We lost to him early and then came back in the dual meet and we beat him. So we're hoping that, uh, you know, we can put a good game plan together the next time we see him. He jumped out 36 to nothing uh, tonight. It, it kind of takes the, the, the pressure off everybody. But among the winners, Tom Kozar, who just in his uh, second varsity appearance, and you were telling us beforehand that, that uh, he really really scraps it uh, in the room with Kyle Marcus. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Kyle's ranked fifth in the region. They just came out with the local rankings. And, uh, you know, we, we have two six-pounders that would start on almost anybody's team. Um, you know, and it's just, uh, it's unfortunate, but, uh, you know, the, the thing is, you know, it's, I hate to use a cliche, but, you know, you always hear, you know, when you see uh, professional and college coaches talking about next man up in football, it's the same thing here. You know, we have, he has an opportunity uh, to really make something of the season here, and uh, I know he's going to take advantage of it because, you know, he's a junior, and he's, he's really put a lot of time in, uh, and it was great for him tonight, you know, pick up his first, his first career victory on the mat uh, in, in the home gym. Now you got to get ready for a big tournament on, on Saturday. It's a big day. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, you know, the Hunter and Warren Sussex tournament is obviously uh, a really tough tournament. You know, we'll see some kids that we just saw this past week, uh, you know, against North Hunterdon and Kittatinny. But you throw in uh, all those other Sussex teams and then, you know, teams like uh, Hunter and Central and Voorhees. And, uh, you know, we've won four in a row and we're looking to make it five. And the guys know that that's the goal at hand this weekend and we'll be ready to go. Can you tell us how the seeding works for that? Yeah, the seeding meeting uh, was this morning and uh, it's all based off of past placement in that tournament as well as districts, region, and state place winner uh, placement um, and the career and the record this season. Um, so, you know, we, uh, some of our guys will uh, have a tough time at it because of, you know, past placement and, uh, and, and as well as their, their record this season because, you know, we've taken them to pretty tough tournaments. So, you know, we don't anticipate at this point in the year the guys have, have a good records on our team. We like the guys to be underestimated and, uh, and, and them go out and prove themselves. Well, congratulations on a big win tonight. Good luck on Saturday, and we will, we will see you next Saturday night here with Easton. Always looking forward to that one. Absolutely. That's one you always circle on your calendar. 
Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. Dave Post, the head coach of the State Liners, who uh, upped their record on the victory tonight with Kittatinny to 4-1 and one on the season. And Kittatinny will fall to 4-2. and two. Phillipsburg with seven falls, a technical fall, and four regular decisions for 59 points. And Kittatinny with two regular decisions to go to Phillipsburg winning by the score of 59-6. to six. And our next uh, webcast will be Saturday night, uh, the 17th, here at the pit, Phillipsburg hosting Easton. Uh, that'll do it for our match tonight. Uh, again, uh, thanks to all our sponsors, and please pass the word along at statelinersports.com. We'll have all the home matches for you here at the pit. Phillipsburg, 59-6 to winner tonight over Kittatinny. For Jim Meglick, I'm Mike Moore. Have a great night.